Hi friends, let's talk about the difference between biliary colic and acute cholecystitis, the two very common presentation of a symptomatic gallstone. So let's start with a case scenario. Let us consider that there is a 50 year old female who is fatty, who is fertile and who comes to you with the pain in the right upper abdomen. And this pain is started after having a heavy meal. There is no history of fever. So when you examine the patient, you find there is a tenderness here in the right upper quadrant and you, you send the patient uh, for investigations, you find WBC to be normal and the liver function test is normal. And when you do an ultrasound, there is an evidence of gallstones, but there are no pericholecystic fluid and there is no gallbladder wall thickening. So what is the diagnosis? A very common problem is, is it a biliary colic or is it acute cholecystitis? So this scenario, my friends, is actually a biliary colic. So why this biliary colic happens? Sometimes what happens after the heavy meal, when you have the cholecystokinin released from the, uh, released from the small intestine, this goes and works on the gallbladder. And when there is a stone in the gallbladder, the gallbladder contracts with, under the effect of cholecystokinin after heavy meal. And this stone goes and blocks the cystic duct, the entry of the gallbladder. So this blocks the gallbladder uh, opening into the cystic duct. So you, the patient starts having pain. And soon this stone returns to, it or to its original position. So the pain disappears after some time. And there is no, uh, because the obstruction is relieved, so there is no bacteria, no bacterial infection, no WBC count, is, WBC count is normal. So this condition is known as biliary colic. So there are a few conditions for the biliary colic. One, the pain should start after a meal. Second, the pain should disappear. Usually the pain is there for four to six hours but it will never be more than 24 hours. That is important. Never more than 24 hours. There will be no history of fever. So you won't find fever. When you do an scanning, you, you won't find fluid around the gallbladder and you won't find uh, a gallbladder wall thickening or pericholecystic fluid. Then you make the diagnosis of biliary colic. Now, if the same patient, if the same patient comes to you and she has fever for more than 24 hours, her WBC count is high, and on ultrasound, you find the ultrasonic Murphy sign is positive and you find the gallbladder wall is thickened. You find there is a fluid around the gallbladder. So all these things are there. Then you make the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis. So how the main, the main, main differences are duration. It should be more than 24 hours. And if it is less than 24 hours, if the patient is having fever, if the patient is having high WBC count, if the patient is having ultrasonic features of fluid around the gallbladder, we consider the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis. Now, what is the difference between the management? The difference between the management is biliary colic. As it is a symptomatic gallstone, you have to remove this. You have to remove the gallbladder. So that is, you have to go for a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. But it's not an urgency. It's not an emergency. So you don't need to admit the patient. You give the painkiller. You send back the patient home. You give the patient with uh, send back the patient with some advices like avoid the fatty food okay and then you give the uh, earliest possible date of the surgery should be given because once the patient is symptomatic the symptoms will keep on recurring coming to the acute cholecystitis as acute cholecystitis is a sort of emergency you have to admit the patient but why do we call it an emergency we call it an emergency because the patient may land up into sepsis the patient and especially more common in immunocompromised like diabetes patients the patient may the gallbladder may keep on uh, distending and may rupture actually so the patient may present with to you with biliary perforation peritonitis so these two are the major issues the patient may go into sepsis the patient may go into biliary perforation peritonitis so that is why you need to admit the patient give the patient's iv fluid start the patient with IV antibiotics and if the patient has come within 48 to 72 hours you do the surgery as soon as possible so now why, why this period of 48 to 72 hours see what will happen once the period of 48 to 72 hours have passed what will happen is the omentum this which is known as the policeman of the abdomen the omentum will come and wrap around the gallbladder so what will happen the anatomy becomes distorted and you won't be able to identify exactly where is the cystic artery, where is the cystic duct and there are chances of injury to the duodenum or the other structures. That is why surgery will be, will be unsafe. So in these circumstances, when the patient is having acute cholecystitis for more than three days, the general consensus is that you may manage the patient conservatively with the help of IV fluid and IV antibiotics and once the inflammation subsides, so it's better to operate after once the six to eight week period has passed. 
while if the patient has come within 48 to 72 hours the anatomy is still clear and it is better to go for surgery that is laparoscopic cholecystectomy thank you keep on subscribing and keep on liking we will we will post these short videos on common surgery topics thank you very much